Well, then, as I said, this is the PowerPoint um, that I set for this week alongside some other activities. So it's basically just bits pulled from the um, textbook, some of which you can read quite straightforward. Um, other bits are a little bit more um, complicated. So obviously, a budget is just a plan for the future. It can be long term, medium term, short term. So we can have plans for capital expenditure, sales, cash budgets, all kinds of things. Um, and in your second year, you will look at um, a lot more budgets than just the income statement statement of financial position so we'll be drawing up budgets for cash um, for production for labor um, sales purchases um, any number of things um, so back to the task in hand then um, a budget is simply a financial plan for the business prepared in advance now it says a financial plan it doesn't always have to be in monetary terms so we could always look at a budget in terms of the number of units that we're going to sell um, the number of units of something that we're going to buy or make might be an issue um, we might uh, look into a budget that deals with the number of hours we're going to require for um, labour. So it doesn't always have to be in monetary terms, but nine times out of ten it will be. Um, so different methods of budgeting that you should have picked up on. Um, incremental budgeting, that's just where you set a budget, perhaps a department gets a budget for a certain amount of expenditure. And when we look at rolling that forward to the following year, we just add a percentage, perhaps for inflation, perhaps for luck. So the problem with these budgets is they tend to get bigger and bigger um, over time. Um, and there is this tendency for people to want to spend the budget to make sure that they preserve it for the following year. So often incremental budgeting can lead to a lot of inefficiencies. Um, zero based budgeting is the, um, the other one that we can look at. So this is where you don't actually set a budget, but every um, item of expenditure, usually over a certain limit, maybe £100, maybe £500, has to be justified. Um, so the disadvantage with this, obviously, is that it's very time consuming for everybody involved. If you're the budget holder and you want to spend some money, you have to get authorization each time. Um, but the beauty of it is that because everything has to be um, justified, there shouldn't be any inefficiency. So no spending just for the sake of preserving a budget. Um, so this isn't something that an organization would do every year, but it would be something that could be done perhaps um, in line with uh, or alongside incremental budgeting, we could um, perhaps use this zero-based budgeting once every five years just to kind of reset things and make sure that any inefficiencies in the budget um, are removed. Um, so benefits of budgeting then, and you should have been able to um, read through all of this, but the main things, it's about planning, it's about monitoring, and it's about controlling. So planning what's going to happen, what you're going to do. Monitoring is comparing that budget that you drew up with what's actually happened. So that could be on a monthly basis or an annual basis, depending on the, the organization and the type of budget. Um, and then it's about controlling. So if you realize that something's going wrong, you've overspent, you've underspent, sales are higher, sales are lower than you thought, then you can take action if necessary um, to remedy that. If it's a good thing, so sales are much higher than you're expecting, then the chances are your budget is completely out. So you may need to, to redraft that budget. Um, but planning, monitoring and controlling are the main three things that we need to think about. There are obviously other benefits, so we can use it for target setting, for motivating employees. And there are other downsides, so um, we can become too constricted by the budget. People will only perform up to the level of the budget that's been set unless there's an incentive to exceed that. So that needs to be dealt with with some care when we're talking about sales budgets. Um, so we can see there we've got a nice little diagram um, where we take budgeted figures at the start at the top, um, just up here, like pointing to the screen. Um, and then we compare those with the actual figures, monitor and compare. So are we higher or lower than the, the budgeted figure? And then control that budget and take any necessary action. Um, so as I said, it can be used to motivate people if we set budgets that are not too difficult, but not too easy then our staff can be motivated, particularly if we link the budgets to rewards, so things like bonuses, if we exceed um, the target. So a few limitations then, um, it says there that the benefit of the budget must exceed the cost. So it's no good putting in place a really complicated budgeting system that requires a member of staff paid £30,000 a year to operate um, if you're not going to reap the, the benefits. So for a very small organisation, um, the budgeting might just be limited to a very rudimentary business plan with a cash budget. But obviously for a very large organization, there's probably a team of people that are dealing with budgets and budgetary control. Okay. Um, like with all things to do with management accounting, the information may not be accurate. It's all just forecasts. 
Um, so there's no guarantee that those figures will be um, achieved. Can be demotivating to staff. So sometimes a budget or a, a target may be set that's just too high um, and the employees think, well, there's no point. I can't achieve that. So why, why would I even bother? Um, it can also lead to dysfunctional management. So we end up with this blame culture. If budgets aren't achieved, then different departments start blaming um, each other. So that can cause a lot of discord in the organisation. And if we set the budgets too low, that can restrict our activities, as I mentioned before. Um, so people, if you set them a sales target, once they've achieved that, then what's the incentive there for them to, to continue to sell more? So we need to watch out for that. Make sure that the appropriate um, incentives and rewards are in place. Um, so I talked about this before, the kind of budgets that are prepared. At the moment, we're only interested in this master budget, which is the income statement and the statement of financial position. Um, so the starting point for these is always gonna be um, the figures from the previous year, unless of course it's a brand new business, in which case it's all gonna be total guesswork. Educated guesses, but guesswork nonetheless. If we've got the previous year's figures and it makes sense to look at those and just see what we think might happen. And that was the situation we were given with Jane Slater. This is the income statement for June 2017. Um, there's a load of information there about increasing selling prices, what that's expected to do to the volume of sales um, and so on, how much expenses are going to go up by. Um, and then it basically works through all of this. But if you are struggling to see where any of these figures have come from, things to pay particular attention to are things like how the purchase of units has been dealt with. OK, that's a balancing figure. And I explain all that in detail um, in my other video. So, so do have a look at that. Um, we can do the same process with the statement of financial position, start with last year's um, and then see if we can forecast the following year's statement of financial position. And again, there is a video on Google Classroom which shows you where all these figures um, have come from. OK, um, so one thing that we can do with with planning and controlling of budgets is look at the variances. So have we got. Um, adverse variances, that could be where we've overspent or where our sales are lower than we thought, or have we got favourable variances? So that's where we've spent less than we anticipated or we've sold more. So variances should never really be explained in terms of pluses and minuses. You need to be labelling them favourable um, or adverse. So a favourable variance is where a cost is lower um, than we thought it was going to be or where our revenue, our income is higher than we thought it was going to be. Whereas adverse variances are where something's cost more um, or our revenue figures, our income is lower than we had anticipated. Um, so this management by exception is really about um, looking at limits. So putting some tolerance limits in place. So if we, for example, said that our budget for a particular cost was going to be £10,000, there's no point launching a full investigation if we've spent 10,100. It's a negligible amount, but we might put a tolerance limit in of five or 10%. So where the variances exceed that, and could be either favorable or um, adverse, we need to investigate. We need to make sure that the figures are correct um, and then take some action if we need to, to sort that out. Um, so that's the end of the slideshow. Let me just stop sharing that one there. Hopefully you're all still awake and uh, and you've enjoyed the video and I should try and make some more. I should try and make some videos to start um, the topics, to introduce them. So um, hopefully as time goes on, I'll get a bit more proficient at doing this. But nice to speak to you all. Thanks for watching.